What's up everybody, my name is Tentacle and welcome to another Ninjala video. At the time of my recording this, Season 7 has just begun, and we've got some exciting new things coming our way. So let's not waste any more time and check out all of them. Two brand new punch type weapons have been added to Ninjala. They're called the Poxing Gloves and the Ogre Gloves. These are quite different compared to the other weapons in the game. For starters, they're insanely powerful, and they can unleash a chargeable wide attack. As a trade-off, however, this attack takes a while to start. Not only that, their back attacks can give you super armor and stagger opponents. Just a heads up, I've been trying to work on naming each type of attack in this game properly. If you're confused on the terminology, here's a list of controls for each attack name. The punch weapons are the first in Ninjala to grant extra movement speed if you continue running for a short time. This applies regardless of your weapon's size. They're also the first to boast three different versions of break attacks. Normal, wide, and back. The back break attack does gum damage if it doesn't successfully break your opponent's weapon. And if you land a successful wide break attack, you'll get a guaranteed Epon with a stylish suplex attack. Unique to the Poxing Gloves is a Gum Boomerang projectile. It can pierce through targets and deals gum damage forwards and backwards. You can also aim the boomerang towards the ground to make it stay in place. Both punch type weapons have a special attack called Overflowing Power, which increases your damage output, speeds up your health recovery, and gives more of your attacks super armor for a short time. I've also noticed that some of your attacks deal continuous damage while overflowing power is active, but I'm not exactly sure how that works. I'll see if I can put something about it on screen right now. Last but not least, the Poxing Gloves are the only weapon in the game currently, to have the Blast Barrier Ninjutsu attack. You get a shield that decreases damage taken, gives your attack super armor, and makes you immune to gum shots. That's right, immune. The Blast Barrier does have one more trick, and it's a good one. You can detonate it by pressing X, which lets you deal damage in a small area. If you KO an opponent that took damage from this explosion, you'll get a guaranteed Epon. It honestly reminds me of the Baller from Splatoon 2. In team battle, whenever you activate the Blast Barrier, your teammates also get one. However, you can only detonate yours if you were the one who activated it. I think it would be really overpowered if all of your team could detonate their barriers. Just imagine. But yeah, those are the punch weapons. That was a lot to unpack, huh? I guess you could say the new weapons are positively powerful. Okay, I'll stop. There's a new Shinobi card available called Ninjutsu Stock. It gives you an extra usage of your ninjutsu attack, which starts filling up after you get your first one. Your ninjutsu attack uses are shown directly below the icon for the attack. The assist codes for Ninjutsu Stock let you restore health from your ninjutsu attacks. And if you've stored both of your attacks' uses, the codes also let you see opponents through walls or take less gum damage. I can only imagine the amount of combos that are possible with this. And lastly, for the big stuff, 
This season's update brought some very interesting patch notes. I'll leave a link to them in the description. I recommend you check it out, as it explains things a lot better than I ever could. Now then, let's move on to the smaller updates. You can now purchase fashion lenses in the Shinobi Shop. They changed the shape of your avatar's eyes, which admittedly is a pretty neat touch. Ninjala is doing a Hatsune Miku collab on October 6th to celebrate her 14th anniversary. There will be six unique costumes, a few new emotes and background songs, and lots of themed ninja gum. I honestly didn't expect this collab at all, but I am very welcoming of it. And finally, we were promised a visual lobby for this season, but the devs encountered some bugs with it in beta testing, so it's unfortunately been moved to Season 8, which starts on December 1st. But hey, at least we know it'll be ready by then. That's it for the updates to Ninjala itself, but I gotta talk about one more thing. I know I've hemmed and hawed about wanting to change my avatar's look for a while now, and you guys probably saw about five or six different iterations of him in my recent content, but I am gonna change it after all, and this requires some backstory. I have three reasons for not making as much Ninjala content as I wanted. First off, it's honestly been really tough for me to think of content ideas for this game. I know this doesn't do as well as my Splatoon content, but I want to continue making content for Ninjala. I like this game! Besides, it's like I always say. If I can make even one person happy with any of my content, then I know I've done a good job. I'll see if I can find some other ways to make Ninjala content, but for right now, that's a future me problem. I'm open to suggestions if I can't think of anything, so feel free to leave some in the comments. The second reason is... I get way too angry when I play this game on my own. I'm afraid that if I continue, it'll start to show in my other content too, not just for Ninjala. Plus, it's just not that healthy to be this mad all the time, no matter how valid I think my reasoning is. The final reason is the most important, and it ties in with the second one. Lately, something inside me has felt off whenever I've played Ninjala. I've been okay with how I was doing for a while now, but my aforementioned rage has started to get in the way. The Demon Slayer collab tournament from late August really opened my eyes to this. I've been able to get over my rage in Splatoon easily, but for some reason, it's just not as easy here. It's not because I don't like Ninjala. I still love it to bits. And I won't deny there are much bigger problems in here than my saltiness. But I just need to find some way to get past my own emotions and get better at Ninjala. I don't exactly know what that means for me yet, but I'll get there. Eventually. That being said... This will be my avatar's look from now on. If it doesn't look like much has changed, well, that was intentional. See, I originally had a plan to completely overhaul my avatar at the start of this season. That's why you guys saw so many different forms of him over the past few months. This is the version I considered using. 
He was from my most recent Ninjala stream. However, if I'm being perfectly honest here, I've admittedly grown attached to my old avatar. The same one you guys saw through most of this video. But I still wanted to change something about him. Sort of a way to coincide with my change in perspective, you know what I mean? So, this is the look I've decided on. I still have all the distinct features of my old avatar, while also giving him a bit more flair. Anyway, that's everything new in Ninjala Season 7. There weren't very many generic topics this time, but I still wanted to highlight as many specifics as I could. Oh, and by the way, I'm so sorry this video came out so late. Working on bigger content combined with the hustle of my personal life left me with virtually no time and energy to work on this. I'll try not to let that happen again, but I still gotta put my personal life first. Regardless, until next time, this is Tentacles signing out. Take care, everybody.